For the past year, I've been using the Dell XPS 9570 laptop for all my professional video editing work, and I wanted to give my thoughts on it and why I think it's really one of the best video editing laptops you can buy right now. I wanna start off by saying I'm no computer guy. Uh, before I even started video editing, I didn't even know what half of you know the computer specs that you read uh, even meant. Um, I had to really learn as I went, and when I was searching for a laptop, I really learned all of these things. Um, but yeah, because of that, I'm not gonna give you a super detailed tech review with all benchmarks and things like that. There's plenty of other reviews out there that can show you those types of numbers. I'm just gonna focus on the practical use of this laptop as a video editing machine on an everyday basis for personal and professional work. So the version I got is with 32 gigabytes of RAM, the i7 8th generation processor, 4K screen, and the one terabyte SSD. So first let's talk about the design and build quality. Uh, one of the number one reasons why people are attracted to this laptop is because it is beautiful. It has a very Mac type look, you could say, which I think is really what they were going for. Uh, it's a full aluminum casing and it's incredibly thin and light. Um, if you compare this to some of the bulkier kind of gaming editing laptops, it just makes them look so bad. Um, I really love the design. I love how light and thin it is. It fits into my bag as if it's not even there, you know, and that has really changed my life. I was using an iMac desktop uh, before this and I was pretty used to it. So I, I kind of couldn't imagine how great it would be to be more portable. I actually felt that I was kind of happy working in the same place at all times. Uh, but, a, you know, a friend convinced me how life-changing it could be when I finally had the laptop and realized I could go to a, a really nice library near where I lived that had beautiful workspaces. It was awesome. Uh, the keyboard is really nice, really comfortable to type on. The screen, the 4K screen is incredible. It's beautiful. It's vibrant. Um, the colors are quite good. And it's also really nice that the screen goes all the way to the edges, very close. Um, and yeah, the, the trackpad works plenty well. Uh, that's something I don't really care about. I use a mouse always when video editing. Um, but on occasion, I guess I've used it and it's fine. Um, as far as ports, it has everything a video editor needs. There's Thunderbolt 3. There's, you know, headphone and microphone, HDMI, USB-C, and an SD card slot built into it, which is awesome because then you don't need an external SD card reader. The most important and really easy to talk about point with this laptop is just its video editing performance. Namely, can it edit 4K footage smoothly with perfect playback while doing color grading and different effects and all of that stuff? And the answer is a simple yes, absolutely. It does it incredibly well. I put my 4K footage directly on the timeline. I can do color grading. Everything plays back perfectly, smoothly, every time. I never have an issue. And it renders incredibly fast. For a general reference on my old iMac, which by the way was not very powerful. I had only eight gigabytes of RAM in it. When I would export a video or do a render, it would often take 20 minutes to an hour, depending on you know the nature of the video. That's what I was used to. I was used to hitting export and walking away from the computer and doing something else with my time for a while and then coming back to it. With the Dell XPS 9570, it often takes as little as two minutes, depending on you know the length of the video. And again, most videos I work on are in that you know, one to six minute range, let's even say for a broader uh, perspective. And yeah, I don't think I've ever had an export take longer than maybe seven minutes. And even that, I don't even know if I ever had one take that long. It's really fast. Um, and that's been amazing. It, it just makes it so I can export, export, export. I can kind of export and send something to a client really quickly. They could look at it really quickly and then I could do it again really fast. It's, it used to be such a chore and um, you know, it takes so much time that 
it would really slow me down and now I don't feel slowed down. So speaking on video editing performance, it's probably a good time to talk about a, well, what a lot of people would call a con, but I just haven't had a problem with yet. And that is the overheating. If you go down the wormhole of reading reviews about the Dell XPS, you're gonna read a lot of stuff about overheating. I was quite worried about this uh, when I bought the laptop, but it was a friend of mine who convinced me to just not pay attention to all that um, because for all of those bad reviews, there's a whole bunch of others that are saying they have no problems. So, you know what, I just went for it. And yeah, I have not had a problem with overheating yet. Maybe once or twice I've had the computer throttle a bit um, when I was really pushing it. But you know, that's not that big of a deal if just every once in a while when pushing it, it throttles a bit. Um, that being said, I was ready and willing to do the thermal repasting and the undervolting, uh, which are two common techniques used to help your uh, thermal regulation of your laptop. But again, a friend convinced me to just use the laptop first, see if it even overheats at all, you know, see how necessary it is to open up your laptop and tinker with it. And that's what I've done, and yeah, I've had no issues. If I do run into issues, I'll redo the thermal paste and I'll undervolt. Lots of people do it. It's quite easy to do. Everyone says it works. So not really a con in my mind. It's just not an issue for me. And even if it was, there's a very easy and cheap way to fix it. So my recommendation is just to ignore all of that nonsense. Um, if you're a video editor, this laptop will be fine. Probably one of the biggest reasons to buy this uh, laptop now going into 2020 is the price. So when I bought this laptop, I did buy a refurbished version from eBay and my price was $1,900 for all the specs I got. That is a really good price, honestly, already. Um, I think new, it was gonna cost like a good five, 600 extra. I honestly can't tell you exactly anymore. Um, but since I bought this a year ago, the price for the same specs I got it at as a manufacturer refurbished is $1,500, which for a laptop this powerful is amazing. And if you compare that to the same or similar specs, but in a MacBook, um, it's almost always gonna be at least $1,000 more approximately. It's awesome that you don't have to take such a big hit and sacrifice uh, in quality to get this price, you know, usually you get what you pay for, right? So I tend to be more willing to spend the extra money to get the better product, as opposed to getting some piece of crap that's gonna break in a year. But with this, you don't even have to worry about that. You can get a super high quality product at a low price. I don't know, it's just great. I think that's a, a big time reason to buy this computer now versus even when I bought it. And when I bought it, it was still cheap as well. Um, because I went for the refurbished, which I really recommend. You still get a warranty and, you know, worse comes to worse, something's wrong with it, send it back, like big deal, just go for it. So another really big plus for this computer is how easily you can upgrade many of the specs. So you can upgrade your RAM, you can upgrade the SSD, you could get it with 16 gigabytes of RAM, for instance, at a cheaper rate, and then you could find a cheaper, uh, RAM cards and then you can upgrade to 32. Or you can get a 500 uh, SSD and upgrade it to one or even two terabytes. So, whereas you can't do that on Macs. So let's talk about one or two cons that I've found with this laptop and they're not really that big of a deal and they're both pretty fixable, but they're just little things that I should mention. The first is the Wi-Fi card. Um, I should say that in most instances, the Wi-Fi card gives me no issues, it's fine. However, in my current home, I set up an office space in one room and in that room, my internet speed is incredibly low, like unusably low, whereas my girlfriend's internet speed on her Mac in that same room is equally fast anywhere else in the house. Um, so I've actually had to use my laptop in a separate room in the house not exactly where I wanted to use it, but it's the only place I can get the enough speed. And that's been a bit of a bummer. Um, 
But if you've looked into reviews, you've probably read that some people complain about it. And of course, you can change that. You can change the Wi-Fi card. It's not that difficult. I've been meaning to do it. I just have been procrastinating on that. Um, I'll do it eventually and it'll be problem solved. Another general flaw or just grievance of mine, let's say, uh, is with just the general kind of bugginess of Windows. And what I mean by that is just very frequently little things don't work exactly right. And it's almost always because you just have to update uh, drivers and things like that. And while it's a, always simple, like you just update the driver and you're fine, it's just kind of just seems ridiculous that you constantly have to do this and constantly little things in your laptop aren't working exactly right. Um, whereas I do feel like on a Mac, that almost never happens. Things are just always working 24 seven, even before you update. At least that was my experience in the past with the Mac. So it's not a huge issue uh, once, you know, I think an issue like that feels really big before you invest in the laptop. You imagine how terrible that might be, for instance, I did. I was kind of worried because I would read about that. Um, but then once you have it and you find, you know, your way with the machine, it's, it's fine. I mean, it would be nice if that didn't happen. But like just the other day, my microphone on my laptop wasn't working and it's because I needed to do an update. And then something with Intel Optane memory pinning was popping up in air. And apparently you, it was because a new update didn't, you know, it had a, a bug with that. Um, and so, yeah, just little things like that are annoying, but they're never that big of a deal. It's not like my computer just like doesn't work, you know, just little things and you can almost always fix it very quickly with just an update. So in conclusion, this computer allows me to do my video editing work perfectly and smoothly. And it looks really beautiful. It's sleek in design. It's light and thin, so it's super portable and it fits into my bag, no problem. And it feels good when you pull it out and put it on the table. You know, it makes you feel like, you know, your life is going well. You, you feel like you're a professional doing professional work. And um, I think that's a big deal, especially for uh, more beginner filmmakers that, you know, you haven't done enough work yet for to really feel kind of uh, verified for your skills or what, you know, you can do. And I think little things like just having good equipment, not having a whole bunch of the cheapest equipment you could find, but having one or two really good items, uh, like a really good laptop, a really good camera, you're just going to feel better about your work and you're going to feel better doing it. And I think that's uh, more important than, you know, a lot of people would like to admit. So it's a powerhouse of a computer. It, it looks really nice and it's just a pleasure to work with. <laughs>